Thank you very much. Um, thank you for the music. I really like the music. And one moment I feel like I was in Africa for a little bit. <laughs> um, I really appreciate it. Thank you, uh, Pastor Daniel, for inviting me here. I wanted to share a little bit um, stuff, uh, what God has done for me in my life and my favorite scriptures. Um, I'm going to bring up the scriptures. This is my favorite uh, Bible scriptures in the book. Um, is a proverb uh, three, five to nine. It says, "Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek His will and how you do, and He will show you which part to take. Don't be a praise and and praise with." You own wisdom and still feel the load and turn away from evil. Then you will have healing on your body and strength uh, for your bone. Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the best part of everything produced. Then he will fill your burn with grain uh, and with your vat with overflow with the good wine. This is my, one of my favorite scriptures. Every time I think about these scriptures, he, al he always motivated me because uh, from where I came from and where I am today, I have not done anything on my own but to put a God first in everything I do. Um, trusting in the Lord with all your heart means like you got to submit everything you have to God because uh, when we trying to do things in our home, we think we know what we're doing. That's why we bring a lot of different things that God does want us to deal with. God is saying, trust me in everything you do. Bring your worries to me. I'll give you rest. I will, I will take care of you. For me, I came to America when I was 15 years old. I had no family, had nobody. I was in an environment when people always told me negative. You will never be this. You will never be good. You will never be a college student. You will never play college basketball. I went back and said, why everybody told me these things? But the scriptures say, everything is possible to those who trust in God. So do I need, uh, I was like, do I need to keep listening to these people? Do I need to start with the word of God? Um, and I said, no. Maybe. I need to trust God. I need to listen to what the Word of God is telling me and still listen to the people. There's so many different people out there. They want to tell you what to do. They want to tell you stuff that's going to bring you down. But and still listen to those people. That's what God wants us to live under his world. The Word of God is always positive because he says, my plans for you is to give you hope and good future. Because... Uh, Every time, God, he never wants anybody to fail. God is saying, I want a good future for you. Submit yourself to me, and I'll take care of you. Jesus talked about this in the Bible. He say, um, say, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. The rest of the things are going to be given to you. When he talk about that, it's not like the rest of the things is going to be given to you as well. It may, did not mean a few things. It means everything. When we spend time with God, when we pray, we're not just praying for God to do things for us. Pray, we are recommended to pray. Pray should never be an option for us. We should pray every single day. We should pray every single time in our life because uh, we got to thank God for him being such a great father for us. For us being alive today, we done nothing. If I ask anybody here, what did you do for you to be alive today? You're probably going to tell me, I done nothing by the grace of God. We thank God for his grace. We thank God for his kindness to us. The, his love for us. We, des we probably don't deserve God's love. But he say, my love for you is unfailing. I'm going to love you forever. I need you to spend time with me. 
I need you to come to me. The, one, uh, the, uh, the stuff what we make it so hard for ourselves is when we trust God with the big things sometimes, but we don't trust God with the little things. We have to trust God with everything in our life. Trusting God, it is a big thing in life. Uh, my dad used to tell me this. He always asked me questions. What is the hardest thing to believe in this world? I say, probably like uh, believe in God. I say, no. The hardest thing to believe in this world is to believe in the things you don't see. It is very hard. Somebody told you all these amazing things about God, but Jesus is saying, bless are those who believe without sin. For the kingdom of God, it belongs to them because they believe without sin. Same with us. We don't need to see God to believe in God. We don't need to have a proof. We talk about in the Bible, uh, the apostle Thomas. They say Jesus has risen from the dead. He said, unless I see him, I'm not going to believe. So we don't need to have that type of faith. That's, a, like, that's what we call like a, he, he was a pool in faith. We need to have a faith. They tell him, Jesus is risen from the dead. He said, no, I'm not going to believe until I see him with my own eyes. God wants us to believe. God wants them, he wants us to trust in him in everything we do. You might go into the problem right now. It seems like impossible. It seems like uh, nobody can help you. But how Heavenly Father is able to do anything he wants at any time. But God is saying, when the time is right, I will make things happen. So let us keep trusting in God for his plans for us. He said, my plans for you is to give you a good future and uh, hope for the eternal life. We are worried. We don't need to fight for the eternal life for God. It's a free gift through Christ. We are where we believe. For the people who are, most of the people say you have to do this, you have to do this to enter the kingdom of God. No. We just need to believe and trust in God. We have to submit ourselves to God. We have to, be, to obey his word. Because uh, one thing I would say, most of the people, we pray, we pray most of the time. But one thing, I'm going to say about a lot of different people, we pray for the result. We should never pray for the result. We should pray God because he's our father, he created us. God is saying when time is up, I will do things in your life at the perfect time. When we ask God, that's what Jesus said. Uh, my daddy always used to tell me this. We think like Jesus only came to die for us. No, he, he has a lot of purpose. When he came for, he came to teach us how we should live in this world. He said, the stuff I'm doing right now, you can do better than me. If you just have faith, you just trust and believe in, you just trust, you know, God is going to help me do this. And Jesus came to train us how we should live. Jesus came and he praised us, say, let us pray for the kingdom of God to come on earth as it is in heaven. So that means like it is a possible. If we all came together and pray for the kingdom of God to come, and God will make it come because it is possible. That's why Jesus say, pray, pray, pray. And pray for God. It is a, when you pray, just ask God, let your will be done for my life. Do not spend your time all the time trying to ask God for the things that don't really matter. Spend the time ask God, God, I trust in you with my life. God, I trust in you with my sickness. Because there was one moment, there was this blind man. Somebody came to Jesus and said, what is, they asked him a question and said, Jesus, so whose sin is this? Because this man was born blind. It is his parents. Oh, it is his mother or it's himself. Jesus he says, nobody sins. So God he has to do this. So when the healing is going to come, so the glory of God is going to be shown in front of these people, and his name is going to be praised everywhere. So your sickness is not a mistake. Your sickness, your stuff you're going through, God he knows about it. When the time is right, and God is going to heal you. When time is right, God is going to finish your problem. I'm in a Kentucky basketball today. Uh, at the beginning of the season, nobody knew who I was. 
by, by me trusting in God. They say, God, they pull me in the lives. But you say, to those who put you first, they will never be last. So I'm going to spend it the rest of my time. I'm going to spend it the rest of my day. Every day, I'm going to praise you three times a day. I'm going to read the scriptures. I'm not going to worry about what people say about me. I'm going to worry about what you say about me. And uh, <laughs> um, and as we goes on, we goes on, I just spend time with God. My teammate, I invite everybody, come in my room, let's pray. Let's pray. Let's go to Bible study. Let's study about God because this life we live in today does not matter. The life we holy matter is the life Jesus went prepared for us. Uh, when we spend time with God, God is not just helping us with what we need. He's giving us strength. He's helping us to stay away from temptation. God is helping us in a lot of different things. For me to be here, I thank God. I thank God for every, all, of, all of you guys. And I wish you the special blessing for the future. That eternal salvation for Jesus Christ is preferred for us. And uh, let us stay strong in faith. Let us be like these three people in the book of Daniel. When they stop them, the king said, you have to stop praising to your God. You have to praise this God. If you don't praise to this God, my God I created, we're going to put you in the fire. These three people say, we're not going to back down. We're gonna, always going to worship the God. We believe he's going to save us. And even if he don't save us, we're not going to back down. He's up to himself, but we're not going to worship your God. We're going to worship our God forever and ever. And when you stuck with that faith and you trust in God with the, all those things, God is not going to let you down. God is not going to let you down. But when they put them on fire, nobody was born in that fire. So let us have the type of faith. Let us trust in God in those little things, big things. Even you're facing death today. You go to the hospital, the doctor say, you got 24 hours to live. Tell him, no, I'm not. <laughs> I don't have 24 hours to live. God is on my side. I will live longer than you think. Um, when you have a faith and you trust in God with all those things, God is make, he make it possible for the things that we think is impossible. And we got to stop trying to answer our own prayers. We got to stop trying to answer our own prayers. We got to trust in God. Be patient. God loves those people patient. God created everything, but like uh, we are the holy, the holy people God created. We we are like we really struggle with God. We always disagree with God most of the time. But, but when we follow God, and He always make things so easy for us. He told Joshua, "You don't need to do anything. Just follow the instruction. Don't go left. Don't go right. But if you just follow the instruction, you're gonna succeed in everything you do." He told Moses, you went through a lot. Just because you're worshiping and praising God, it does not mean your life is going to be easy. The holy life is going to be easy. It's the life they prepare for us, Jesus. But we just got to fight. We're going to face a trial and a tribulation. Don't back down. For me to be here, my family is like, um, uh, I probably say, probably like 15,000 miles away. But I'm here. I know I'm not alone. I know God is about my side every, everywhere I go. And I just say, God, I might, my family might be so far away, but you are never far away from me. And um, I thank God for everything. Um, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And uh, thank you. Can you clap for Jesus this time around? Give a hand covering for Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you very much, Brother Oscar. It is not every day you have a basketball player from the UK basketball team with us, isn't it? It was a great, great one. Thank you for coming. I really appreciate that word of exhortation from you. And right now, we'll go straight to the next item of the program, which is our scripture reading. And it's going to be given to us by Brother Amoa Emmanuel. 